Hello, my name is Dr. Diwan S. Raja. Today I will discuss about the histology of the skin. The skin is the largest organ of the body and skin has two layers, epidermis that is superficial and the deep layer is the dermis. The epidermis is composed of stratified squamous epithelium and the dermis is a thicker layer of connective tissue. So epidermis is epithelial tissue and the dermis is the connective tissue. We'll also get epidermal peg and dermal papilla. Epidermal peg is the prolongation of the epidermis into the dermis and the protrusion of the dermis above is the dermal papilla. The epidermal dermis is ectodermal derivative. The dermis is mesodermal derivative. Okay. So this is the histology of the thick skin. We'll get that. This is the thick skin. From here to here, we have the epidermis this part is the dermis epidermis is of a thick skin has a very thick layer of stratum corneum this is composed of dead epithelial cell there is no nucleus in this epithelial cell layer we have multiple layer of epithelium because it is a stratified squamous keratinized epithelium so we have the stratum basal, stratum spinosum, then we have the stratum granulosum, stratum lucidum, and stratum corny. This is the basal layer. It is also called stratum germinative vitam. Okay. From here we'll get the other cell. Here we'll also get some mitosis. So these cells are replaced by the stratum basal cell or germinating cell layer. Okay, so you got the stratified squamous keratinized epithelium, and this is the epithelial or epidermal peg or ridge. This is the this is the dermis. So this is epidermal ridge. This is the dermal papilla. So they interdigitate so that the bondage between the epidermis to dermis is strong due to the interdigitating of the epidermal peg and the dermal papilla. So these cells are also called keratinocytes this epithelial cell because ultimately we'll get the keratinized layer. Keratinization begin from the, the stratum spinosum layer. It goes up and here it is totally keratinized here. And we'll also get some non-keratinized cell like that of the Langerhans cell or antigen presenting cell. We have tactile cells that is associated with sensation is a sensory receptor also called Merkel disc and we'll also get some of the melanocyte cell those melanocytes are derived from the neural crash cell and they give the pigmentation of the skin this is the dermis it has two layer one is papillary layer is reticular layer the papillary layer is loose connective tissue. Reticular layer is a dense irregular connective tissue. It is rich in the collagen and elastic fibers. Okay, we got the thick skin. We have the keratinocyte, five layers, the stratum basal, stratum spinosum, stratum granulosum, stratum lucidum and stratum corneum. This is stratum corneum layer.
okay we have non keratinocyte like that of the melanocyte here is the melanocyte here okay and we have the we have the tactile cells or Merkel cells and we have the Langerhans cells or antigen presenting cells okay this is the histology of the thin skin here why it is thin idea is that the stratum corneum layer is thinner here okay and this cell are more this part of the skin is more vascular more cellular here and the corneum layer stratum corneum layer is is thinner and the thin skin also means the layer called stratum lucidum layer that is missing here okay and also we'll get hair follicle here hair follicle is not present thin skin is present all over the body thick skin is present in the palm of the hand as well as the sole of the foot so this is the basal layer stratum basal or stratum germinativum is here this cell will multiply and that will replace those cells this is the keratinocyte of stratum spinosum we have the desmosomes here desmosomes the intracellular junction and these are the the cellular processes here connecting one cell to another cell and these are the intermediate filaments with the intracellular junction this is the intermediate filament okay if we go to that to the darkness of the of the thin skin we'll find a lot of elastic fiber the dark are the elastic fiber and will get the collagen fiber this fiber will be thinner as they passes to the dermal papilla and these fibers are attached to the basement membrane of the stratified squamous epithelium again this is the epidermis this is the dermis this is the dermal papilla and this part we call it epidermal rays okay and this is the elastic fiber and the this is the collagen fiber so the darker one is the elastic fiber okay we have some tactile receptors actually not some we have a lot of tactile receptors okay if you go there we have the Merkel Merkel disc Merkel disc is present here nerve bending and goes to the basal cell layer make a disc okay here the tactile disc we have the free nerve bending some of the nerve fiber just penetrate the epithelial cell go to multiple layer of the epithelial cell here there is the free nerve bendings we have the pacinian corpuscle just like the onion skin okay this associated with the mechanoreceptor function plus it also maintains the vibration it also senses the vibration of the body okay we have the Meissner's corpuscle that is present the tactile receptor here that is present in the dermal papilla with the end ball cruzy or cruise ball here is the cruise ball here that senses the light vibration and Ruffini corpuscle that senses the cellular shearing cellular damage so a lot of tactile receptors are associated with that of the skin and this is the hair follicle it also receives a lot of nerve supply hair follicle is associated with the sebaceous gland sebaceous gland secretion goes there in a holocrine fashion these cells 
are broken it comes out of this way we have also sweat gland here this is a part of the sweat gland sweat gland opens into the skin surface this is a sweat gland another one is here sweat gland another one is here okay so this is the subcutaneous tissue okay also called superficial fascia it is composed of areolar tissue and adipose tissue we are seeing a lot of adipose cells this is not included as a part of the skin skin has two parts one is the dermis and the one is the epidermis epidermis is composed of stratified squamous keratinized epithelium and dermis is composed of connective tissue the papillary layer is the areolar connective tissue this is loose and the reticular layer is a dense irregular connective tissue okay we have the hair and nail these are actually formed by the keratinocyte extension here this is the nail here okay and here is this and here is associated with a smooth muscle called erector pylorum muscle that is smooth muscle it may contract and it it may make the hair skin straight okay usually by it, it is done by the sympathetic innervation and this is the this is the nail here okay this is the nail formation of nail due to epidermal growth inside okay we have some clinical application hyperpigmentation pigmentation due to the stimulation of the melanocyte by the acth adenocorticotropic hormone in addition to this is there is hypofunction of the adrenal cortex so the pituitary secretes a lot of acth that causes hyperpigmentation by stimulation of the melanocyte melanocytes are present in the stratum basal and they inject the melanin to the to the stratum spinosum cells okay hypopigmentation may be due to congenital defect in the melanin synthesis it is called albinism or it may be acquired called vitiligo it may be an autoimmune mechanism bullous pempigoid there may be disruption between the epidermis dermis layer in some skin diseases and in pempigus there is disruption of the of the desmosomes in the stratum spinosum layer ehlers danlos syndrome is a problem of the collagen in the dermis layer malignant melanoma is a malignant cancer of the melanocyte okay acne vulgaris is a clinical condition when there is excessive accumulation of sebum in the sebaceous gland around the hair follicle there is excessive keratinization excessive secretion of the sebum in in the in the sebaceous gland alopecia loss of hair it may be due to aging process due to the action of some male hormone also it may be due to an adverse effect of chemotherapeutic medication okay so we'll highlight what are the identifying point epidermis dermis what are the layers of the epidermis stratum basal stratum spinosum stratum granulosum stratum lucidum stratum corneum okay stratum basalis is the germinative layer layers of epidermis melanocyte is the cell which produces the melanin pigment markel disc is a sensory receptor but we must remember that markel disc may undergo cancer formation it is it may also turn into cancerous changes and it may be even more cancerous than that of the malignant melanoma although it is very rare langerhans cell is the antigen presenting cell associated with immunological function dermal papilla is the prolongation of the dermis underneath the epidermis layers of dermis we have two layer the papillary layer and the reticular layer papillary layer is a loose connective tissue the reticular layer is a dense irregular connective tissue sebaceous gland is a 
holocrine type of gland it secretes the sebum entire cell is destroyed in this process if there is excessive collection of sebaceous gland could excessive keratinization plus some bacterial action in the young age group in the youth there may be in the upper adolescent we may have acne vulgaris or comedon sweat glands are present especially in the in the thick skin these are the the gland these are the merocrine gland or and the apical region and the perineum some books say they are also they are called apocrine gland but this found there they are also merocrine glands erector pili muscle are the smooth muscle that is associated with that of the of the hair it is innervated by sympathetic innervation and sympathetic stimulation cause bull skin bump in the skin and with the hair become become straight and erect okay so this is my reference and that's all about the histology of the skin if you have any question please feel free to ask me and please consider to subscribe me have a nice day bye now